Today we'll focus solely on a procedural shader based material which will allow us to create this particular sci-fi cyber loop. It's going to be really simple. So let's learn how we can create this. In our default scene, we're going to press X to delete the default cube and then press shift A and search for a mesh plane. Of course, you could have added this onto the cube itself, but a plane is good enough. So let's press S5 to scale it by five units to just make it a bit larger. Then to actually be able to see the material, we'll switch our viewport shading to rendered and we'll switch all of our rendered defaults. So we'll go to our render properties, switch on bloom, we'll expand it and we'll just change the intensity to 0 0.02 and maybe clamp it down at four. Then we'll select this default light and tap X to delete it. Finally, we can start off the actual material. Let's bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and we'll change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Now we'll select the plane and we can add in a new material or we can use the default material and change the name to sci-fi grid. You could change it to whatever name you want. Now we don't need the principal BSDF so we'll tap X to delete it. Now the first thing for the grid is that it was made up of multiple circles. So how do we add in circles? We can search for a gradient texture and for now just to preview it we can directly connected to the material output and you see this gives us a gradient that goes from the left to the right but since we want it to be circular we can change this from linear to spherical and now you should get at least one quadrant to shift this up we have to change the mapping and we could do that now but we'll deal with that in a second. But what we can do now is actually converting this from this quadrant into just a ring. For that, we use a color ramp node. And since we want this ring to be sharp, we'll change this from linear to constant. And we start bringing this white in. Apart from that, we'll take another stop over here by pressing control and then clicking and then changing this to a black, which will now create the ring. Now you can adjust the thickness just by playing around with this, but I'll go with a ring that's fairly towards the end and thin as well. Next, we can go ahead and add in the texture coordinate and mapping nodes to play around with the actual location on the plane. Let's take this gradient texture and press Ctrl T with the node wrangler switched on to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. If you don't have node wrangler switched on, you can go to your edit preferences, add-ons, and then add in node wrangler. Now to make this into a circle instead of a quadrant, we can change the location on the X and the Y. But before we do that, we'll focus on actually getting this to repeat. So to make it repeat, we have to change this texture coordinate from generated to UV and then have it change on the X and the Y. To have individual control on the X and the Y, we can search for a separate XYZ node and plug that in, after which we can search for a combined XYZ node and plug that in after the separate XYZ. Now we have to connect the X to the X, the Y to the Y, and the Z to the Z. Next, from many of our previous tutorials, you should be able to guess that to make something repeat, we can use a math node set to modulus, which gives us the remainder after division. So if we divide something by one, every time the number crosses one, we get the remainder till it becomes one, and then it goes back to zero, one, zero, one. So if the scale is greater than one, will make it repeat that many number of times. So we have to change this from add to modulo. And now we can plug that onto the X axis and we have to change this value from 0.5 to one. Now you see, if we change the scale two, we should get two repeating patterns. If we change this to three, we should get three repeating patterns. But this is happening only on the X axis because we added in the modulo on the X axis. Now we can take this modulo, press shift D to add it onto the Y axis. And now we should have it repeating on the Y as well. Now to finally make everything become a complete circle, we can change the location on the X and the Y, or we can search for a vector math node, plug it in after the combined XYZ and just subtract away 0.5 on the X and the Y axes. Now clearly they all disappeared and that's because the circles were too large. To bring them back in, we can again search for a vector math node and this time instead of add, we'll use the scale function and just increase the scale until they all fit in perfectly. So I think this value is good enough and I actually want them to be a little thicker. So I'll go ahead and drag this in to make them thicker. Now we can use any whole number to adjust this scale value over here to increase the number of circles. So to get a whole number that we can control, we can search for a value node and we can search for a math node set to round. We have to change this from add to round. And now we can plug this in here and plug this into the scale. That way we can now just start increasing this and we will always get perfect whole numbers, which gives it a nice grid. Let's change this to something like 25 for now. Next up, we don't want every single one of these circles to appear. We want a few of them to disappear and we want to do that in a fairly random manner. For that, we can use a Voronoi texture. So let's search for a Voronoi texture and now control shift clicking it with the node wrangler switched on will let us preview the node and you can see it's currently cell shaded so we'll reduce the randomness down to zero and now we get perfect squares if we want each square to be shaded to a random value we don't use the distance socket we use the color socket control shift clicking it again will shift this preview down and now if you search for a color ramp node and plug it in after this color we turn it into grayscale we can change this from linear to 
constant and then just bring this in and we essentially get ourselves a mask. Now we'll change the scale from five to one and then use this value for the scale to actually increase the scale. However, right now, even with a scale of one, you see it's only on one quadrant and that's because this isn't centered to the object. So to fix that, we use its own mapping node to press shift D on the mapping node, use the same value on the scale and use the UV coordinates from this texture coordinate node as the vector, plug this into the vector and change the location on the X and the Y to 0 0.5. And that will bring it in perfectly to the center. If you actually remove the scale for now and keep it at a scale of one, you should see that each square covers up the entire plane. And if you drag this in, you should get exactly one white square or one black square. If you increase the scale to two, you should be able to have four quadrants. If you change it to three, you should have nine different boxes. So this is exactly what we want. So our Voronoi texture is working. We can plug in this value directly into the scale and we should have one square for each circle that is present. Now to get circles present only when the Voronoi is white, we search for a mixed color node. We change the type from mix to multiply and we simply multiply these two results. So let's take the color from here and plug it into the first socket and the color from here and plug it into the second socket and increase the factor all the way to one and control shift clicking it reviews what we have. So now you can see some circles are there, some circles aren't. You can always increase this white slider to add in more circles and you can decrease it to remove some more circles. So I think this many circles is good enough and these circles will remain. Next, we need a bunch of circles that keep appearing and disappearing by actually changing its size. So if we look at this gradient texture again, we'll see that this is currently a sphere and a sphere is a three dimensional shape. So let's go ahead and take all of these nodes, the mapping, the modulo and all of them till just before the color ramp, press control shift D so that they actually maintain the same connections to this value node and the texture coordinate nodes and then control shift click this gradient texture so that we actually see what it is. Now, if we actually add in a value on the Z axis, you can see that we can get it to appear and disappear by changing this Z value. Another way of changing the Z value is by actually adding in a value after the separate X, Y, Z. And right now, if we cross the value of one, it just disappears forever. So to bring it back after we cross value of one, we can go ahead and add in another modulo function with a value of one. So let's press shift D, plug that in over here. And now if we change the value on the Z, we can get them to appear again, even after they disappear. So instead of controlling it using this Z value, we'll use another math node set to add before this modulo. So let's press shift D, plug it in here, change this to add. And now we can simply add the value. However, you can see that it just appears as a full circle and then it slowly disappears and then it remains disappeared for the next 0.5. And that's because when we added this subtract value, we subtracted only on the X and the Y and not on the Z. So let's subtract 0.5 on the Z as well. And now when you add, you should get the circle to completely appear and then slowly disappear and then slowly appear and slowly disappear. If we go ahead and add in our color ramp, we should get a ring that appears and disappears. So let's take this, press shift D and plug it in over here. And now by playing around with the add, we get a ring that appears and disappears. But this particular ring, I don't want it to have sharp edges. I want it to be nice and soft. So I'll change this from constant to ease and I'll just bring this white in, maybe make it a little thicker. So that's good enough. Now by playing around with this value, we get them to appear and disappear. Now, I don't want all of them to appear and disappear at the same time. I want a random value to be added to each of them, like a phase offset. So to add in a random phase offset, we can search for another math node set to add, and we have to add in some value, which is random over here for each of these circles. And if you remember, we do have a random value for each of these circles present from the Voronoi texture right here. If you actually previewed the color, you see you get a random value for each particular square. So we can go ahead and plug this color value into the first socket of the add and plug this add into the second value of this particular add value. And that way, if you now preview what we have, we have each of these rings at a different phase. And if we play around with this value, we should have them slowly appear and disappear. And if you want to increase the randomness, you can always press shift D on this add value. And then after pressing shift D, just plug it in before the first add and change this from add to maybe multiply and multiply it by a random value. That's just going to change the randomness. Make sure that you change this add value because that is what's going to be used in our animation. Remember, if we keep it as whole numbers, as in we change it from one to two, we should see no difference. It doesn't have to be that. As long as we add one, there shouldn't be any difference. So maybe if we started off at 1.5, when we go to 2.5, there should be no difference. But in between that is where the animation is going to appear. Next up, I don't want every single circle to actually appear and disappear. I want only a random selection of them to do the same. So to get a random selection, we can just duplicate this Voronoi texture, but change it up a little bit so that it doesn't 
be the exact same as the ones that are present continuously. Remember, the output of this are rings that are present continuously due to this Voronoi texture. Since we want to change that, we can press Ctrl Shift D and then change this to 4D and just play around with the W so that we get a different random selection. And now we can multiply this value with whatever color output we get from this with another color ramp. Let's actually duplicate this color ramp as well. Plug the color into the color ramp so that we get a black and white mask. And now search for a math node set to multiply. We have to zoom in, change this from add to multiply, and then take the color from here and plug it into the value for this multiply node. Now, if you play around with this value, you see only a few spheres are there which appear and disappear. Now, I want a few more of them to be present. So I'll go ahead and bring this white value in. And I think that's about a good selection. Next, we have to actually combine these two. So let's take another mix RGB node. And this time we're gonna change this from multiply to add so that we have both of them and just plug this in here and take this value and plug it into socket B. Now, when we actually go ahead and add in this value, you see we have some circles that are present always and some circles that appear and disappear, which is a perfectly good animation, which is exactly what I wanted to create. The next portion of this is actually giving it different colors. So for the circles that are present at all points of time, I want there to be a slightly darker color. And for the circles that appear and disappear, I want it to be brighter. So I need to add in two different colors to this. So to convert this from white to some color, I can press Shift A and search for another mix color node. And this time I'm gonna change the type from mix to color itself. I'm gonna increase the factor all the way to one. And now since these are the circles that are present at all points of time, I'm gonna change this to a slightly darkish blue. So maybe let's go with this particular blue. And then I'm gonna duplicate this color node, plug it in after this color ramp so that we can give these appearing circles a different color. So let's change this to this lighter bluish color. And finally, we actually have to plug this into some shader. So I'll press shift A and search for an emission shader and plug this in for the color. Now for the strength, I can just go ahead and increase it to give it some nice bloom. And there we have the material. Now to add in the animation, we can start off by setting all of our animation defaults. So we'll go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, change the end frame to 150. So it's a five second long animation. Output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video and encoding, I'm going to change from Matroska to MPEG4 and an output quality of Perceptory lossless. Then I'm going to go to frame zero and hover over this particular add node that we had over here and tap I. Now you could change the value before you do this. It doesn't make too much of a difference, but you can choose something that you like. I'm going to go with a value of 60 and then tap I. After after which I'm going to go to frame 150, which is my last frame. And I'm going to just change this to maybe 61 or 62, basically add one, two, three. And the number that you add is going to change the speed of the animation. And it's essentially going to go through that many loops in that five seconds. So I'm going to go to 62 and then tap I, and then I'm going to select this node, come down here and press T linear. So then if you play the animation, you should get a nice looping animation. And if you want to see the real speed, you can change this playback from play every frame to frame dropping. So that way you get a realistic idea of the speed at which this is animating. And I think this looks good enough. I might change the colors around a little bit here and there. So instead of having this blue, I'm just going to bring it up a little bit more. And essentially after that, you can go ahead and place your camera. So let's select my camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation. So it should be present at the origin point and downwards. Then I can press G Z to bring it up a little bit. And I guess I'm going to press R Y and just turn it a little bit Then G X to bring it to the side. And now I'm going to press zero to go into my camera view and see what I'm seeing. Now this is way too zoomed in. So I'm going to press G Z to bring it out a little bit and then GX to bring it back and then again GZ, GX. And now I think I can't zoom out further, but I want way more circles to be present here. So I'm actually gonna change the value node in my node tree. Let's change this to maybe 30. And that way I get some more circles added in. Then with my camera selected, I'm gonna go to my camera properties, go to viewport display, change passport out all the way to one and switch on depth of field. Now I'm gonna expand depth of field and just decrease the f-stop quite a bit. And then I'll change my focus distance till I get this central region in focus. So I think something like that is good enough. And once I'm done with that, I can go ahead and press render animation. Hopefully that was not too hard to follow and you understood the node setup. It's a very powerful node setup and we've done very similar things on this channel multiple times before, but I really thought that this one was worth mentioning once again. If you enjoyed that, remember there are multiple videos on my channel that are just waiting for you to explore them because I've released one video every single day for the past 98 days. In the next two days, I'll be releasing 100 videos in 100 days and I'm really excited for that one. If you're excited for that too, be sure to subscribe stay tuned and watch videos until the next two videos release. And until they do, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and stay creative.